Welcome to Strathspey Stories. Strathspey, the part of Scotland between the town of Craigellachie to the northeast, and the hill also known as Craigellachie above Aviemore, is a land with a river running through it. It's a land of many facets. A land of kirks and castles, rapids and railway lines, of grouse moors and small towns, burns and woods, lochs and standing stones, ospreys and freshwater mussels, single malt whisky and giant salmon. It's a land of lairds and farmers, brownies and kelpies, history and legend. But it is above all a land of music and stories. Strathspey gives its name to the tune form unique to Scotland with its dotted jagged rhythms and the stories are bound up with the mountains, moors and woods along the river's length and of course the people who inhabit them. In days gone by, large parts of the woods were harvested and sold off at great profit to people like the York Building Company and Osborne and Dodsworth of Hull for their timber. The coming of the timber barons was not wholly appreciated. Yonder's the little glen, kindly and sweet, haunt of the full-grown hearts, my curse on the bands of men that have robbed it of its glory. Now, instead of the song of birds and the murmur of deer in the thicket, our ears are stunned by the crash of falling trees and the clamours of the Sassanach. It was work, though, for the fellers, draggers, loggers and the sawmillers who prepared the wood for its journey down the burns into the spay by far the most direct way of moving it. And the sight of the logs being sent down the river was an exciting one. The logs were rolled into the river and young men would manoeuvre them with long poles, jumping from rock to rock and sometimes riding the logs themselves. The logs were then lashed into rafts and floated down the wider river, guided by men in curras, the light little craft made from bullock's hide. Elizabeth Grant, the celebrated Highland lady, knew these men and their work. A large bothy was built for them at the mouth of the Druy in a fashion that suited themselves. A fire on a stone hearth in the middle of the floor, a hole in the very centre of the roof just over it where some of the smoke got out, Heather spread on the ground, no window, and there, after their hard day's work, they lay down for the night in their wet clothes, for they had been perhaps hours in the river. Each man's feet to the fire, each man's played round his chest, a circle of weary bodies half stupefied with whisky, enveloped in a cloud of steam and smoke, and sleeping soundly till the morning. So that's just some of Strathspey's stories. Curras and Kelpies, muskets and mayhem, buried treasure and battles and wizards of the black arts. There are, of course, many more stories to tell. Goodbye. <laughs>